Right, good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the Tackle Room. We've got a next special guest on today. As you can see right next to me on the camera, we've got Sam Collett, uh, the newest international feeder angler for Team England. How are we doing, Sam? Very well, Alex. Are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm good, mate. I'm really good. So, Sam, obviously, um, European Feeder Cup last week, your first cap for the Senior England feeder team. How does that feel, mate? Yeah, it's amazing. Obviously, it was a competition where it meant two England teams could put some new anglers in, basically. So, obviously, you had your first team, if you like, which is obviously your normal feeder team now. And it actually gave an opportunity for sort of five other lads, uh, sorry, six other lads to come in and have a go. Yeah. Um, obviously, being in the home nation, there was a chance for like, us younger lads or whoever to have a go as well. So, obviously, in our team was Jamie Harrison, Rich Wilson, Tom Norton, Oliver Scott and myself and Max Stevens. So yeah, it was a uh, obviously Dean rang me and says like do you fancy? And of course I took it at both hands and uh, it was an opportunity for us lads to have a go and uh, experience this sort of international level feeder fishing. Yeah. And uh, it was brilliant really. Obviously we can hold a head tie. We started very well and obviously had a bad um, last day, but it was really nice to sort of get some experience and uh, like I say, we we're le learning new things and it was a brilliant event. Yeah, and for the people that don't know, obviously, you've got uh, caps of the junior side as well with the float team. Um, yeah. So what what's the main difference, obviously, coming from that background? Um, obviously, you've done a lot commercial-wise recently and then moving to the feeder side as well. What What's the transition been like? Yeah, it's it's been, obviously, since I was young, I've done, I've always had a bit of a mixture of fishing, as you probably know, like I've, I've always done a bit of everything, if that makes sense. So I've yeah. done like a bit of commercials, reservoirs, natural fishing, a bit of everything. So one of them, I like to always have a go at new things and do a bit of everything. I've always enjoyed different types of fishing. So yeah, um, obviously, it's it's funny because at a sort of younger age, I've always liked feeder fishing and I always wish there was like a junior world champs of feeder fishing. So when this actual... Yeah cool sort of come up I was like I just look at I've always loved feeder fishing so it was nice to have a go at it and I thought I always thought you know I'd sort of fancy that in the future and obviously it come round and it was just a great opportunity to get a feel for it and see if like obviously enjoyed it which I, I absolutely loved it and see what how all the top lads do it and learn off them and bounce ideas off them so it was just a great experience in general I mean obviously a lot of my fishing as we obviously we've known each other quite a long time now and um, Obviously, you fished a lot of commercials in the past. Um, obviously, all your sort of qualifiers and events and stuff like that. But a lot of some people don't know I actually do do quite a lot of sort of natural fishing and stuff. Obviously, I did all like the ju England junior stuff, the float fishing, which is brilliant. And yeah, it was nice to have something different again to have a go at, sort of have a really good go at and sort of learn something new and take from what I've learned from other aspects of fishing into that. and hopefully try and get better as an angler as well. And that's what it's about sometimes, isn't it, mate? And <clears throat> obviously the competition itself, first time it's ever been run, obviously hats off to Lee Carey for running it. Yeah, um, brilliant. With with the international teams coming over to Boston as a thing, how did you think originally them teams had fared going into that? Obviously, uh, me walking around on the training days, you see a lot of the teams are taking pictures with F1s, taking pictures with yeah. big carp absolutely loving it um before before obviously it happened how do you how do you think it they were gonna come into it and obviously take the ball by the horns as it were yeah i mean obviously with well, us being the home nation we've obviously we had to be sort of the favorites if you like because obviously we know the, the fishery and everything so well um but as you know we're fishing against world-class anglers and i mean all these fantastic anglers it doesn't take them long to adapt or work out a method to catch these fish and um what you've got to remember with this competition is it's no method feeders, pellets, boilies or catapult or anything like that. It's all feeder only, 50 centimetre hook links and only a certain amount of baits you can use. And then it's like natural baits. So everyone's sort of on a level sort of pe uh, playing field, really. I mean, we even us, we can't fish there how we would fish normally. Yeah. So it meant we had to work out a method to catch them with these long hook links, get the feeding right. And it's everyone was sort of in the same situation, which was nice, really. Because, don't get me wrong, our, the England teams probably know the venue better than other teams, but you can't fish how you normally fish. So it yeah. actually made a lot of level playing field, and it shows that you look at the results. I mean, 
the Czech Republic and Hungary, I believe. I think they were second, third, and they've obviously our team was second going into the last day. They've sort of got it sort of done something right, especially that sort of third day. Yeah, and it's worked for him. It just shows the world class anglers and they can adapt to anything. Yeah, exactly that, mate. And from myself walking around for uh, a few of the days, it's really interesting to see how they attack it and obviously approach it. One thing I will mention is obviously the Hungarians, how I wouldn't say brutal they are, but how fast they wind fishing is yeah. something to behold, isn't it, really? Definitely. Um, I'll, I'll just bring this up now, but in the section with the 80s on the second day, I think uh, Lee Kerry lost out in his section by, I think it was 40 yes. gr- 40 grams, something like that. Yeah, something the, really, really close. Well, yeah. The, the Hungarian angler wound in a seven, eight ounce skimmer with 15 seconds to go. Mm-hmm. And when I say that fish never touched the water all the way back, I don't think it did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how do you feel the venue reacted, obviously, to the international rules then as a whole? Obviously, going from the start of training till the end of the match, how do you think the actual venue reacted to it? Yeah, I mean, to be fair with it, it was good because it didn't really change dramatically um, through the week. Because obviously, you look at the weights and everything, how it's fished. I mean, what a venue for teams to come over and fish. Everyone's had bites, which is the main thing. Um, but as in a lot of world championship venues, when you fish, you normally your practice week can sometimes give you a false reading Sense. of what the match is. Yeah. yeah, because you go and I think it's over a week or two in before the the actual venue shut, so no bait goes in. And normally, your first two, even three days of when you're practising on your actual match left in the World Championships can be rubbish, just because no bait's gone in. And then by your sort of match days or a few days before, it responds to the bait and it just turns on like a different venue. But with Boston, been obviously fished a lot and obviously has a lot of matches on it and stuff like that, it didn't really t- change, so, didn't really sort of change it too much, which was really good for everyone. I mean, I think it gave the other teams plenty of time to sort of adapt, if you like, as well, because it didn't ch- change too much. Yeah. Obviously, there was plenty of bites. I mean, it's, I'm sure you'll agree, it's been such a good venue to host it. Plenty of close weights and stuff like that, and everyone's caught fish, which is the main thing. And well, you look it is, at, yeah, yeah, you look at approach wise as well. I mean, there's so many ways you could approach it. It's either do you go for carp and F1s or maybe an odd bream or do you fish for skimmers? There's all different dynamics to it. Bait choices. It was, I think it was a really good event, to be honest with you. I think, I think obviously, Lee and yourselves at the Angling Trust should be proud of what you've done. It's um, it's good to bring sort of a, a world-level sort of event to this country. Exactly. And obviously, hopefully going forward, we get to a point where we can bring it back to England and then hopefully go again, whether it be somewhere like Boston or maybe split over two venues, maybe go somewhere like Medellin's and Boston at the same time. If it, if it did get bigger, um, we'll, we'll jump into practice now, mate. So first day, first day of practice, obviously you've got two days, two days on the venue before it started. Um, how do you feel practice went? Yeah, I was happy. I mean, the first day we were in the teens, in the teens, our, our actual team. And then obviously, the aqua team are in the 20s. Yeah. So, obviously, we know it's a good area of Boston. And uh, practice, yeah. I mean, personally, I had a good first practice day. Um, we just caught a nice sticky maggots long, catching carp. So, obviously, not allowed a method feeder. So, it was very similar sort of mentality where you start out where the fish, you chuck on a method feeder and then work your way out. Um, but, yeah, I caught plenty of carp. Everyone's caught a few fish. And, obviously, we'll try different things, really. But the main thing with it, you felt like you could learn something because when you're fishing there, you've got a, re- a reaction fast. So yeah. it weren't a case of anything you chucked, it didn't work. If you want to get a reaction, it would work within a few casts that thought it could work something out. But yeah, the first day, it was just mainly in that area, as we know, it's just mainly carp. So we caught some lovely carp and everyone got a few bites and we let a few things. So, and obviously we're all getting into the groove of the international rules again and getting rods right, tackle right and everything like that. And it was a good productive day. Yeah, correct, correct, mate. And going into day two, you were on the other bank. And one of the main things I probably said to you on the second day of, uh, of practice was 
it was at it was unbelievable the difference between the two banks in in regard to actually the temperature that you were fishing Definitely. in on either bank. Um, yeah. How how do you think that affected the fishing from side to side? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think it was an easterly wind we had on it, and the first two days, the mornings were absolutely freezing, like it was really cold, and obviously, it did make sort of a bit of a slower start for everyone, which was expected. Um, really, but the second day we were on the the nineties, and the aqua team was on the hundreds. And to be fair, we've done the same, pretty much the same thing the next day, and they were like different lakes. To be honest with you, as we know, that area is a bit different anyway. But that wind was in our face; it was freezing. And that actual practice day, I've started out long, and Oliver has next to me, and it was tough. It was like chalk and cheese for the first day. Um, just I think just the cold weather really because it was even colder with that wind on it. Yeah, and then that sort of area that day was more of a skimmer area. Um, Tom's me right fish for skimmers. He's caught really well. I've gone back and done what he's done. I've started catching, and yeah, everyone was sort of caught skimmers that day. But we all sort of I think one thing is with fasting is you can't rule your your sort of carp and F one line out or bream line yeah. because how the actual match day turned out, how I fished in that last day of practice. I've caught like that the next day, that long, whereas in the practice day, I've caught hardly anything that second day. But on the actual first day of the match, I've caught all my fish out there. So yeah. it always kept you on your toes. But the main thing was just having plenty of kits out, plenty of rods, having all like three lines so you could bounce off them and try and work out what the fish were. And it was it was a case of just trying to work out on the day as well and not being having too many preconceived ideas in your head, sort of. Almost work it out as you go along. That was the main thing with Barston because, was, as we've seen, it changed every day. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Lee had a massive weight the first day, and then the second day, it didn't produce hardly anything like that. So it was good, really. It always kept us on a, kept us on our toes. Yeah. So going in, going into the first day of competition, um, where have you drawn to start with? Right. So <clears throat> the first day of the competition, I was on one oh five which is E-section. Um, it's quite funny, really, because every time I go to Boston, I end up drawing that sort of area. Yeah. But obviously, compared to the first, obviously, my last day of practice, which was in the night of the day before, I didn't really have any sort of, thought, yes, this is going to work, I'm going to do this. I was a bit like, I settled my lines up and thought, I've got to try and fish my own, my own match here, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, every, we all sort of, every section fished a bit different so like you had to not, not I don't mean like fish your own match within tactics the tactics say the same but it's working the what distance the fish were at that was the main thing but yeah so I was on 105 and I basically set up a 50 odd meter line yeah um a 30 meter line and then a skimmer line at 20 meters so basically my 50 meter line just fed like particles and chop worms and stuff like that um, my 30 meter line was getting particles, so basically fishing like a carp party mix, basically. Yeah, because obviously that's it gets carp fished a lot, so that's seen the bait. Yeah, um, we try your ground baits and stuff like that, but it's just no good because when you go pleasure fishing there, all you see is carpers with and they feel like party mixes, so that was the bait we're putting their sort of stable diet into the into yeah. peg, so that was key. And then on my 20 meter line. That was just a case of ground bait, a few worms, and that was just to try and catch skimmers, really. But, yeah, on that particular day, it's obviously, I've 10-minute pre-baiting, so I put a couple of feeders out long, a couple in at, like, 30, and a couple in on the skimmer line, and I just had an open mind approach because we didn't know what it was going to be like. It was a bit warmer that day as well. It was, don't know yeah. it was cold, but it wasn't as cold. But, yeah, I've um, chucked out my 50-odd metre line. Nothing first shot. I've caught a cart, like, seven-pound second shot, so that was a brilliant start. Yeah, and then I've had like a really, a really good spell. Then, not like don't get me wrong, not bagging or anything, but I've caught a few F ones, a few skimmers, and I thought, yeah, I'll win the section here. Um, and then sort of in the middle of the match, it went just an odd bite. I thought, particularly in my mind, I thought, right, I've got a lead now. So I thought, if I can just jump on my skimmers and keep ahead, I'm going to win the section. Yeah. Um. So once that sort of long line sort of faded after about an hour and a half, something like that, I dropped on my skimmer line. And to be honest with you, just a rubbish. You only caught like four on it. You couldn't yeah. tick along on it. So I thought, this is just not this is just not going to work. So I've actually chucked it back out long. 
and I've caught a couple of skimmers, but then it, I sort of had a spell where it wasn't going for me again. So I've actually got some chop worms and actually put them in with my particle mix. And it's like just made a complete instant impact. So they've literally caught one in a minute. I've caught an F1. Then a spell for about 20 minutes where it's gone round every chuck. F1, skimmers, caught another carp. And then I had like a nice steady end to the match catching big bream. Yep. And I weighed in 20, 28 kilo, I think it was. I was 26 or 28 kilo. So yeah, that was enough to win the section. I think like 18 kilos seconds. So I was obviously made up with that. First, obviously, first experience of that competition. I couldn't wait for the second day. And obviously the team, not forgetting the team as well, obviously, we had some really good results. Everyone was up there and um, was second to the aqua team on the day. So that was perfect. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. What more can you ask for, really? First day of competition. And just what, just just one thing I'll drop in. Obviously, it's a three day competition as well. Normally, internationals yeah. are only two days. Um, so it was really interesting. And obviously, going into the second day now, you guys are in second. And again, again <clears throat> a good match. I'd see you with a decent result. But the third day changes, doesn't it? Really? Um, yeah. But we'll now go on go on to your second day. Uh, how was that for you, mate? Yeah, I mean, it's quite funny, really, because, I, again, I somehow drew E-section again. The chances of it. Yeah. It gets funnier, but I've actually drawn 110. Now, when I drew it, I looked at it. I mean, on sort of the edges, I mean, well, I'm sort of in front of the island, but on the left-hand edge of it. Yeah. And I thought, as soon as I drew it, I just thought, yeah, that looks really nice. It just looked, looked fishy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, same same approach. So I mean, twenty and thirty meter lines, they stayed the same. Um, and then this time I've gone up to like sixty meters. I've just gone just off the island. Yeah. So obviously the island there, I've gone a bit further than the previous day because I've obviously got my feet chart. Yeah. But I didn't start tight up to it. I just started a few rod lengths off it where it looked fishy. But another thing with that island there, it was a very shallow island. So I didn't want to start there because of that. But I also I felt like if I did need to go there, I've got some somewhere to go as well. Yeah. So pretty much it's a very sort of similar match. Um I've chucked long, um, 60 meters, so it's just like off the island, a few rod lengths. And I've just fed me particle mix there. I've had all my initial lines exactly the same as I was starting the first day. So I've gone straight in on the island line. And it's been really good. I've, it's gone round first chuck, caught small carp, and then I've lost a good carp second chuck, which was a bit annoying. I thought, you know, when you sort of get one of them fish, it thinks it's gonna, and you think it's gonna cost you. I was a bit yeah. like that with it. But long up link, sometimes you can't do anything about it. And then I've had a nice, just steady run of F ones to the island, caught like probably five or six F ones, and then again it's sort of, sort of petered out a bit. Yeah, tried me thirty meter line and me twenty meter line, and in that area, it just didn't seem. Didn't seem brilliant for whatever reason. Um, and then I was just steady away. I weren't, it weren't very hectic yeah. through the middle. And Darren Cox was on 108. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to yeah, mention Darren. <laughs> I was going to mention yeah. Darren being next to you. So. Yeah, and um, he's he's changed. He's put like a rocket feeder on. Yeah. And he's had a few chucks and he's, he's just had a mad spell. Like, he's got some great big F1s. Great big carp skimmers, and I thought, right, I need to do something here because it's almost like he's drawn all the fish yeah. into his peg or took mine, which is good angling, obviously, by him. And I basically made a change. I thought, right, if I'm going to win here, I need to like be more aggressive. Yeah. So obviously, with it being cold as well, I'm a big believer is in I don't want to fill it in straight away because I can't take it out. Yeah. So I started off steady, and then up the ante as the match went on, and about two hours to go, I thought. He's overtook me here, so I thought I need to try and have him here if I can. I need to try and make yeah. something happen. So I put like the biggest knee to rocket on. I think it's a six hole. I think it is. And basically, I've gone with a different mentality. I was on a little window, like a medium window feeder before with yeah. um the particle mix in. And I did try my worm trick from the day before, put a few worms, but it just didn't work this particular day. But I put this feeder on. I thought, right, I need something to happen now. So I've actually up oh, yeah, the um up the ante a bit, I've decided to feed more and I put a six old Nisa rocket on. And basically what I've done is I've put a mixture of worms, particle mix, and I've actually just capped it with some like zig cloud. Yeah. And um it literally first chuck of caught one and then I had a really, really good run the last two hours. And I've luckily I've just overtook Darren. I mean 
I caught one, I think about three pounds just before the all out, and I had 31 kilo and he's had 30 kilo. Yeah. So I look, I luckily, I sort of I managed to make something happen and got that run late on. I mean, I did think that car would cost me, but luckily I got away with it and it didn't. And yeah, it was enough to win the section. Great battle with Darren. We had a bit of a laugh as well. And yeah, two section wins again, team second, and we thought, Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and obviously another section win. So that's two section wins out of yeah. two. Um, where did that put you individually after the second day? Uh yeah, it's a shame it wasn't a two day event like normal, Alex. Yeah. The team would have been second, I'd have been second, but yeah. Uh, it's it's three day event, it is what it is. So but yeah, well second, I mean, I've got to be I've got to be deadly honest, I thought we'd do well to come third or how we were going because I yeah. thought the, the tactics were spot on i thought everyone everyone were confident fishing well and yeah we were, we were confident going into day three yeah um and what happened going into day three obviously a lot harder day we had all of this rain come in all at yeah. once <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it got there in the morning obviously I, again somehow it's an e-section it's it's mental and i've drawn i've actually drawn darren's peg yeah um where where he was the day before. So obviously I thought, I really fancy this. Yeah, I, I felt yeah, like yeah. I knew exactly what I was doing. But arriving at the peg in the morning, the lake was like a hot chocolate colour. It was really, really heavy coloured because obviously all the rain and stuff we've had and all the floods. Yeah. And setting up, we all sort of thought, this is a bit odd. We don't know what's going to happen here. Um, and as we're fishing as well, the water level is coming up and up and up all the time. So these are things you've got to bear in mind as well. I mean, I thought, to be honest with you, the first two days, I thought, you yeah, know what, I've worked a few things out here and I was confident. Yeah. But the match is exactly the same. I've approached exactly the same to start with. And I've had a decent start again. I've caught a bream and a two and a half pound carp within the first sort of half an hour. And I thought, this is going to be good. And I thought, you know what, I've got my little tricks I can use as well to catch more fish. Um, however, I had... Dean come down and after like, I think it's about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. Uh, Peter, I think the Czech guy on 104, I think it is. Yeah. He's had like three carp for 10 kilo and lost three as well or something. And I was thinking, all right, this is who expected that sort of thing. Yeah. So it was one of them, really. I tried... Obviously, clouding it up and um, trying worms and all sorts on my long line, and it just didn't work. Yeah, couldn't catch there. And it's mental because the first two days, I thought, felt like I'd worked something out there, and I thought, you know, I'm in tune with it, if you like. And leads me right, it was actually on the peg I drew the day before, so I knew it was going to be hard to beat anyway. Yeah, he's had, don't get me wrong, he's not empty, he's had like a steadyish start, not nothing yeah. hectic. He's had a carp, I think he had a carp, a few F1s, and like a few skimmers off the island. Yeah. Um and yeah, and I've basically dropped in short. I've caught another cart there, but only like three pound. Um and then it just it felt one of them days, it nothing was going. You couldn't count skimmers short and I sort of I kept dropping long and nothing were happening. And so I seen Lee to me right, he's gone in and caught a few thirty meters. So yeah. I've actually then come back into thirty meters. And I've caught a few big skimmers. I thought, yeah, I'm on this now. Like, I know where yeah. the fish are. And then I've had one where it's gone round. It's a carp and a big one as well. I can feel it, obviously, probably eight pound plus. Yeah. And I've really, really played it gently. And they've got it to net and that's come off. And like, oh, no. And it's one of them, you know, when it doesn't feel like it's going to be your day. Yeah. But um, yeah, totally. I carried on, you know, you, you can't give up like the day before. Things like that happen. Um. And yeah, of course, steady-ish with skimmers to the end. I mean, I had a few F1s and other car, but they just weren't the size that I was hoping for. But it's was, it was interesting that day. It was all 30 metres, and the only way I could get a bite was putting Zig Cloud and then following it with, through with a feeder. It was yeah. really weird. Um, but yeah, that day I ended up with 14, I think 14 kilo, and it was disappointing fifth. But if I got that carp in, I'd have been third in my section, which is really frustrating, but it's fishing that happens. Yeah. But I never felt like I had the chance to win the section because obviously the Czech guy uh, ran away with it. Yeah. And obviously beating Lee the next peg is going to be so difficult anyway. But I felt like third was me, me sort of possible target. And it was a shame not to get that because obviously it being up for the team. But ended up as a team, we've, we've just really struggled. Like, it's mental, really. We're doing, we're doing so well two days on the bounce. 
and then the last day we just couldn't catch. I mean, that just shows you what fishing can be like. Yeah, it is. It is, and that's why it's called fishing and not catching, mate. At the end of the day, that's it. But yeah, I mean, it's one of them. Like at the end of the day, we've all had a good time, and like I say, it's a learning for us, especially we're all learning at the same time. So don't get me wrong; it's a bit disappointing. Obviously, we come fourth in the end. Yeah, obviously after being second two days on the trot, but. I don't think you shouldn't you shouldn't sulk too much because obviously we're all new and we've we've actually done all right to be honest with yeah. you I think and been a bit unlucky the last day but I think you have got to take the positives out of it and we're all learning and we've all had a great experience like it's no point sulking like use it to your advantage and try and make you a better angler exactly and I think that's probably what Dean's told you on the last day as well that you yeah you you, you are it's an experience at the end of the day. And we know how how good Dean is at obviously being a manager. So, yeah, definitely. I must admit as well, like, he's been really good with us. I mean, obviously, he knows sort of us guys are sort of new into it as well. He's like, he's, he's been really good. He's obviously kept two, both teams mixing together as well. Yeah. It's just been like really nice to like, it's just been a nice environment to be in. And, um, like, we've learned so much off like the other guys. He's, he's just had it bang on, to be honest with you. Like, the, the mix was really nice. Yeah, that's yeah, good. It's been really good. So we'll finish the chat there, mate. Obviously on Euro on Euro feeder cup yourself with the competition, but we've got two more questions for you, mate. So yeah. what I ask everyone, um, the first one is if there was any advice you could give to any sort of junior angler out there that wants to get into the international level level, whether it be feeder or float, what would that be? Um, first of all, just the fishing and first of all, the biggest thing is to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Um, that's the main thing. So if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to have the desire to learn or anything like that. So what the first thing, pick something you enjoy, um, and basically just go and practice. I mean, you can't be better, make yourself better sat at home. You've got to go out and put the work in to get the results. I mean, I remember when I was doing the junior thing, I obviously, the first England trial, um, I didn't get in, which I wasn't good enough. Simple as that. Like it was all new to me, and I was learning. Yeah. And obviously, I we found out for like the next year it was going to be like waggler fishing um, at long range. So when I was younger, I used to get my parents to drop me off at Makings. And I used to fish late one, even in the freezing cold or winter. Yeah. Um, and basically, I just put the effort in. So I practiced what we were going to be doing on the trials, put the effort in, and I let. Later that um, that year, I got in the team, and I, I, that was just purely for me putting the effort in. Like yeah. it doesn't come to you, you've got to go and do it. Exactly that. It's sim- as simple as that. As well, if I was young, if, if any tips to sort of youngsters as well is just like just go and push yourself. Like if you're fishing junior matches, go and fish some adult matches as well. Like push yourself, like because you only get better by fishing against better opponents. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Like when I remember when I was younger, like I used to go and fish like like adult matches, and at the start, sometimes I get absolutely battered. But in the, the day, it makes you better because you learn from them and just ask them for advice and tell you. And that's the main thing, really. Just go out and practice, enjoy what you're doing, and that's going to make you better. Perfect, mate. And the last question: Is there any uh, Angling Trust or FIPSO competition that you'd want to win yourself? that you haven't already won? Uh, yeah, all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I say, it doesn't matter particularly. Every match of fish, I just try and do the best I can and, and win what I can, basically. It's simple as that. Um, I think as long as you, the way I look at matches now is I'll, I'll try to win my section um, and hope it's the best section in the match. I think that's the best thing you're doing it because if you go in these matches now and think, get all your downbeat if you don't win and stuff. Sometimes you can't help it. So if you just look at it this way and think, if I try to win me section, that's the main thing. Because you you can't you can't help if you're not in a very good section. Yep. If you win your section, then hope it's the best section in the match. And then you'll win. Simple as that. But yeah, it doesn't matter what match it is. I always want to I want to win as many matches as I can, what no matter what it is really. Yeah. Hopefully Fisher a- Mania would like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, mate. So Again, Sam, thanks for coming on, mate. Hopefully we'll see no you problem. again in the future, mate, with the England FIDA senior team or wherever it may be, a fish show win or whatever. Um, Hopefully. So, yeah, thanks for coming on, mate, and we'll see you next time. No problem. Thanks very much. Sorry.